Hello friends, just a reminder if you don't need the recording of me reading the slides to you, that's fine. You can just use the PowerPoint presentation. This is Drawing Lesson 6, Harmonious Relationships. A study of proportion. It is very certain that no one was ever born with genius that could grasp instinctively and all at once the first principles of art. All have learned and all must learn to draw. In art, harmony refers to the proportional relationships between parts, the perfect balance between diverse elements. Most people have an innate sense of harmony without ever formally um, having formally studied the subject. We are intrinsically sensitive to well-balanced parts because we lived in an ordered, natural environment where we recognize the symmetry in a person's face, for instance, or experience the rhythm of the seasons over the course of a year. We sense order in the very build of our bodies, the way our fingers relate to our hand, the hand relates to the arm, and so forth. Often we instinctively feel this rightness without consciously identifying it. Harmony occurs when the different size parts relate to each other and to the whole in a similar and balanced way. Because good proportion feels natural, we often notice it only when a problem arises. For example, my brother, who has never studied art and never willingly spent an afternoon in a museum, can easily give me a valid critique of my figure work, particularly when an unintentional distortion in the features makes something look unnatural. It is one thing to see proportion clearly. It's another thing entirely to create great art. Even the most competent artists need much practice and training to achieve consistent proportion. Fortunately, you do not have to reinvent the wheel. Many artistic disciplines, from architecture to fashion drawing, are inseparably connected to the study of proportion, largely because it contributes to the success of any artwork. This study has been historically pursued two ways, by carefully observing nature or by following tenets laid out by expert practitioners. Um, in this self-portrait, the artist has run lines throughout the head so that every angle relates to another part of the drawing. See how many repeating angles you can find. Learning from nature. In a study of harmony, artists have looked for millennia to nature to build on a thread of knowledge. Ancient Greek architects related each element for their buildings to one another in much the same way the human body is designed. Each part has an individual integrity that nevertheless relates perfectly to the whole. Um, let's see. Some artists have studied the natural world so intensely that they push the boundaries of knowledge and advance many fields. Through close study of the natural world, artists throughout history have discovered that nature conforms to certain rules and patterns that can be translated into methods useful for art, science, and design. Nature remains the greatest teacher of all and is the first source of artistic knowledge. Scholars have noted that Leonardo da Vinci used a similar proportional system in both his anatomical dissections and his architectural drawings. Um, Pietro C. Marani, author of Leonardo da Vinci, The Complete Paintings, wrote, Leonardo's definition of the human body in terms of proportional relationships gave him a mathematically measurable, secure foundation for the translation of the figure into artistic representation based not only on observation, but on underlying laws of harmony and beauty. The Renaissance tradition of blending studious observation of the visible world with an interest in the design systems of classical art remains alive and well. Many contemporary artists value the surprising beauty and efficient design found in nature and want to incorporate it into their own work. We can learn a great deal about the Western artistic tradition by using similar means. The designs of nature have worked their way into the proportional systems of artists and are an invaluable source of imagery for architects and designers. We can see the whole thing. The artist analyzes the facade of a cathedral using circles and triangles. This orderly substructure of geometry lends a unity and cohesiveness between parts and the whole. The artist schema. In the past, it was common to draw according to convention. Drawing templates of animals, plants, and figures flourished. Artists learned to copy an ideal image, and from that, they could choose to amend it by direct observation from life. 
Uh, this drawing is a copy of an illustration from an early American children's drawing book. The eye is constructed around a triangle. Take time to memorize a few simple proportional rules for figure and portrait. From the early days of art history through Victorian times, budding art students practiced traditional canons of such things as eyes and ears in various positions until they were known by heart. Uh, place a single line above and below, add a circle, tone in some hatching, and press a convincing feature. Today, such a process is unthinkable for the fine artist. Uh, gone are the days when schools train fine art students to draw by memorization. Uh, why this kind of drawing fell out of favor is a complex and varied topic, but needless to say, there was a change of taste. This is the five studies. Um, historically, it was not uncommon to spend considerable time considerable time studying each individual element of a figure to fully understand it. This was certainly the case during the Renaissance um, when Cellini came of age. Many of the greatest artists of the past and present have studied rules of proportion of depth. Uh, some Renaissance and Baroque artists not only memorized the formulas handed down by their predecessors, they also studied countless models from life to exact consistent rules that feel universal in application. Um, in this Da Vinci's male head with profile or in profile with proportions, Da Vinci carefully constructed the head inside a square and used it as a unit of measurement. Within the square, he related each part of the head to another by running his angles through. See how many of these intersections you can find. These notebooks are beautiful works in and of themselves, as seen on da Vinci's male head in profile with proportions. This gives us clues as to how these master artists were trained. By learning these rules, you can quickly solve artistic problems. Use convincing shorthand and recognize how your subject departs from the expected. These schemas provide a, so a strong substructure on which you can build an original drawing. In time, you will see how some of these schemas work in real life. Of course, there will be deviations, but the rules provide an outstanding starting point. The downside of using formulas is obvious. If you rely upon them too heavily, your work can feel unobserved and formulaic. The upside, however, is that you will often be more accurate. Plus, when used carefully and thoughtfully, formulas can be a gateway to more careful observation from life. Artistic canons can perfectly bridge the world of the mind, uh, the universals, and the world of the particular, the observed. The figure is divided into six and a half head lengths. Each of these of those points hits a memorable landmark. These measurements apply only to a figure viewed straight on, not at an angle. This rule of thumb creates useful points of comparison to relate with the actual model. Never force your drawing into these regular markers, yet you will be surprised by how consistently accurate they are. These are some commonly accepted proportional formulas for the figure. Remember that your schema should adjust to the model, rather than your model adapt to your ideal. Standard divisions of the figure and portrait can be found in most drawing books. A common unit of measure for the figure is head lengths or head widths. In most cases, it is one head length down to the nipples, and two head links to the navel. The halfway point on the body is usually at the pubic bone. The full height of the body is generally seven and a half head links. The bone of the upper arm is typically one and a half head links. The bone of the thigh measures two head links and the lower bone nearly one and a half head links. Portrait drawing offers another opportunity to use structural landmarks to your advantage. Just as with the body, reliable relationships between the parts of the face will help you to accurately measure the whole. For instance, the halfway point of the head, the center line, runs through the eyes. The mask of the face breaks down into thirds from chin to just under the nose, from nose to brow line, and from brow line to the hairline. The eyes tend to be one eye width apart, in a front-facing position, the entire width of the face across the temples is generally five eye widths, and the width of the base of the nose is an eye length. For these measurements to be useful, you have to be eye level with the model. If the model is foreshortened, they do not hold. 
Of course, these universal similarities do not preclude individuality. Ideal proportions provide only a benchmark to check against your subject. They help us see where our subject departs from the norm because unless we know what to expect, we cannot recognize how something is different. Of course, um, the artist shows the necessity of understanding the anatomical landmarks and the animating gesture to convey a feeling of life, of life and movement. This fascinating page of Rubin's book offers us a window into the mind of a towering genius. He did not just copy what he saw, he morphs a human in a horse head to convey in the profile of the person, the dignity of the equine. So for your assignment today, I want you to create a drawing of a person using the proportions we discussed, the head rule. If you need to go back and check again to, to see how many head links are on the body and the different points that they should end each head link. For example, we discussed that the that one head length should get you to the nipple and then two to the top of the thigh, etc. Okay, so go back, check, make sure your head lengths are in the right place and draw yourself just a rough sketch of a person following the rule of thumb that we discussed, the head rule.